Okay, so about a month ago, we shot a video on a budget Proxmox build that we were working on slash recovering from a network failure in our budget cluster and just kind of an overview about it. But there was a user that asked a question about adding a USB Ethernet port. Now, we did cover it at the end of that video, and it might have been a little unclear. I'm not entirely sure, but I'll give the user the credit, or the viewer, rather, the credit. And I wanted to shoot another video on this because I thought it might be just some good content. We've covered it a few other times in many ways, and there was enough information to piece it together. But if any of you remember the old days of the forums back in the mid-2000s, you know, digging from multiple different sources to piece together all the information you want can be somewhat annoying, and I can understand why a lot of people might not want to do it. Myself, I enjoy it, and I find that's the best way of learning. But that's that. Okay, so we're going to switch over to our Proxmox web interface here, and you can see right here that I've gone ahead and I've added a USB Ethernet port. So... You don't really need to pay attention to the name. The name is created by the driver that Proxmox uses for these. I don't completely understand the convention, but this one's a little bit wacky. So the first thing I like to do when I'm doing this, especially with the web interface, is I like to highlight it and press edit. And now we can get the full name of this port. I'll highlight that. And then I'll use my shortcut key for copy. In my case, it's Command C. But if you're in Windows, you might want to use Control C. But I'm guessing if you view in this video that you already know that. And we'll close the window. And we're back at the web interface for networking. And if I didn't cover it before, which I know I didn't, you select your server and networking to get to this window. All right. So then we're going to go create. And the default bridge that we use for interacting with VMs on Proxmox is going to be a Linux bridge. That's what's set up by default, and you can see here paired to my first Ethernet port. All right, so create and Linux bridge. Now, the first thing we want to do is bridge ports or bridge port. We're going to copy that entire name. In. Now, at this point, we can hit create, and we have a bridge that we can use to communicate from our VMs to our network. But if we wanted to communicate with the outside web, which in my case, as you can see from this grayed out picture, I have my gateway set up on my first port and my IP set up on my first port. But if you wanted to, you'd enter an IP here, and for any port that you want to communicate with a web interface on, you also need that IP address. If there's no IP address, there's no way of communicating with that port, so keep that in mind. So you don't need to assign an IP address to every bridged port. They will work without an IP address. They'll assign the IP address to the VM that's connected to them and go off and work somewhat like a smart hub or switch where it doesn't have, or not a smart hub, rather, a dumb hub or switch, you know, the standard ones that don't have any management and where they just break out into other hubs all over the place, other ports for systems. So a bridge can work that way if we don't assign it an IP address and we won't be able to communicate with the web interface on the server. So keep that in mind. But if you did, you could enter the IP address and your standard default subnet mask for CIDR is going to be slash 24. That's your standard 254 addresses for your standard class C network that you'll find in your home. Now, I'm hoping you're not viewing this video if you need to know more, but if you're doing something like like subnetting or something for your house for dividing. Um, there are some good videos on, on YouTube about that. Network Chuck has a few of them, just to give him a shout out. But go look them up or drop me a comment and I'll explain it. I'm not sure I want to get into that unless a few of you ask for it. Anyways, gateway. Gateway addresses can only be assigned to one port. 
one port on your Proxmox server, you will get an error message if you try to assign it to more. That port is the port that you're going to communicate with the internet for. So if you're getting updates or other things from the internet for your Proxmox server, which I hope you are if you're using it in most configurations, you're going to assign that port a gateway address. Now, you also have to have an IP address if you've assigned it a gateway and you're going to use it with the internet. Just keep that in mind. All right, so for us, we're just going to press create and now we press apply configuration. Note that the port right now for active is set to no. When we press yes, the port turns to yes again. So the port is active and the bridge is able to be used. That is all to setting up a USB Ethernet port on a Proxmox 7.2 server, or 7.3 rather now, using the web interface. Stay tuned if you would like to know more about how to do that with the command line. For a scenario where maybe you are setting up a laptop or something and you don't yet have any access to Ethernet and you don't want to reinstall Proxmox. There are some scenarios, especially if you had to do it with a hard drive swap due to a broken screen or something. And we did cover some of that in our broken screen reuse video on laptops for our budget. But stay tuned and we'll be back in a second to cover how to do that on the command line. All right, so we're back here and I've deleted out the ethernet port or the bridge that we added using the web interface. And we're gonna go in and we're gonna add it again with the command line. Now I'm gonna do this by clicking shell right here and opening a shell window. Now I'm doing this for demonstration reasons. This is the same exact way you're going to do it if you are on your monitor and keyboard connected directly to your server and you are looking to do this process. I'm doing it this way because it's easier to demonstrate and record it for, for me because I don't have the USB to HDMI video recording equipment that I need to do that job. It's just hasn't been in the budget to purchase lately. So that's that. I know I should probably get it, but you know, server hardware, keeping content going, it can get expensive and my budget doesn't necessarily allow for me to spend extra on that recording equipment that I probably should have. Enough excuses and let's get on with the rest of this tutorial. So we're at the command line and I hope you can see this okay. Um, We'll find out. So the first thing we're wanting to do is we're going to use nano to edit a file called etc slash networks slash interfaces. And that interfaces is plural with an S. So we hit enter and this is what we're going to see here. Now we can notice that the server automatically added right here where I'm highlighting our ethernet port for us already. So it knows it's there, but it doesn't know what to do with it. This block that we've highlighted here is going to tell the server what we want to do with that ethernet port as far as IP addresses, gateway IP addresses, and bridge configurations. So we're going to need to set up a bridge configuration. Now, again, I'm going to set up this bridge configuration with no IP address or gateway address. Remember, you're only allowed one port with a gateway address on Proxmox. So keep that in mind. So this line will add a gateway if you want. This line will set up an IP address for that port. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is create another virtual bridge. So we're gonna type in auto, A-U-T-O, and we're gonna call our bridge VMBR1 because zero bridge has already been used by the default configuration. Then we're gonna type in IFACE or IFACE VMBR1 one inet and manual all right then we're going to come down a line and we're going to tab over and we need to 
enter a bridge port, a bridge STP off, and the bridge FD0. So I'm going to copy this. You may or may not be able to copy it on your system if you're on the command line. Most likely, you won't. All right, so you notice I took the name of the Ethernet controller, the USB Ethernet controller, which was right here, that was INAT manual, that's right there, and the bridge ports, I copied and pasted that in. So now, using the command line, we have set up a USB Ethernet port for a bridge. But if you were, like you would be in most cases doing this in the command line, adding your primary Ethernet port, which would mean that you are adding an IP address and a gateway address so you could then interact with your Proxmox server using the web interface, you're also going to need to configure another file. Now, technically it doesn't really fit in the scope of this tutorial, but I do want to touch upon it because in most scenarios, if you were using the command line, you're going to have to configure that file as well because it's going to be set up wrong. So when you try to log into your web interface, even though your server has an IP address and connection to the internet, it's not going to work. So that file, if I scroll up through, is nano etc hosts, again, plural. And you can see the top two lines, the 127001 line, which denotes the local host domain or, lo or localhost.local line. And then you can see the what is labeled on my server as the IP address, the 192.168.50.20 line for my ser server, and then the ve slash home dot lan name for the server. Now, that is the configuration line for the host name of our server, and that'll get everything up and running so you're able to log into your web interface and begin working with your interface after you've added your Ethernet adapter. So I hope you found this video educational and informative and you've been able to use this to get your Ethernet port up and running on your Proxmox server. So as always, have a good night.